Welcome to the restructuring series with me, Luke Venner, and Jack Callow. Good morning, Jack. Good morning, Luke. Are we well? I'm very well indeed. How are you? Very good, thank you. So we're talking creditor pressure. Um, what do we actually mean by creditor pressure? Yeah, creditor pressure, I mean, there's, there's uh, an obvious definition within the name. It's creditors applying pressure to the business. Mm -hmm. um, but creditors take all all sorts of forms, shapes and sizes. You've got your, your trade creditors, your, su your, your suppliers, uh, you've got your taxes, HMRC, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you've got the bank. And creditor pressure can come in the form, specifically with banks, you know, just around the terms and the covenants. You know, the bank might not actually be applying pressure, but you're trying to, you know, stay within the within the form. The, Within the boundaries of yep. you know of what of what the you know the, the terms are to whatever funds have been been lent to the business and other funders you know investors directors anybody that is leveraging their position um, to apply you know pressure to the business because they what do they want they want they want to be paid and they want mm -hmm. to protect their interests mm -hmm. so you know creditors will apply pressure for often the right reasons um, because they're owed money but. It might, you know, it could be a timing issue for the business. Um, we need to be careful around the insolvency point. Uh, you need to be able to pay your debts and money for due, but there are, you know, it's not that cut, cut and dry, and we, we need to be able to handle and deal with creditor pressure. Uh, sure, correctly sure. To make okay. sure the best outcome. So, what's the current sort of landscape looking like? Yeah, I think it's important to talk about this because obviously the pandemic um, it has been going on for a significant period of time. And mm. I mean, I don't know how, how you felt the first two weeks of the pandemic went, but. You know, I've never spoken to more people in my entire life, and then the, the, the government brought in you know, specific measures, and you know, there was so much protection out there for mm -hmm. business that yeah. you know, one of which was you couldn't, you, know, you could only go so far with credit pressure, which ultimately meant credit pressure meant a very little. You couldn't petition for a company to be wound up was, was the most was the most obvious, and and that has changed. You know, that it's not completely back to what it was before, um, and it, you know, there are still things to be considered, and you know. That's where advice needs to be taken. So it's a lot of, you know, initially it was a lot of breathing space, wasn't there? Oh, hugely. For, um, for businesses. Oh, we, we, we had many conversations with people who, you know, were on the, you know, they were in a credit position going, well, what mm. can I do? The reality was very, very little. But you've now got a pent up element of frustration. Um, you know, people have sort of, they've been patient. And, you know, if there are still issues out there, you know, they have got more tools now to, to apply pressure. So it's worth mentioning that, you know, if you've got creditors, you know, out there that were being kept at bay, they, they, they now have more in their arsenal to, to bring real pressure. And you know, <coughs> if you're aware of that and you've got problems, now is probably the time to, to seek some advice. So it's, cha it's changing for the, you know, better in terms of the people that are trying to pursue money, but, you know, for the worse for the people who are owing the money. Um, what, yeah. what, what can, you know, what, what can businesses be doing to help them, you know, help them with this increased pressure? Yeah, I think um, it is worth putting your, yourself in the shoes of the creditor mm -hmm. um, you know we're all creditors you know within business in somebody else's balance sheet if you were so you know creditors just want to be paid what they're due in most cases um, and you know for what they're looking for they're looking for trust they're looking for reassurance they're looking for comfort that things are in hand that things are being dealt with appropriately um, now you can achieve that yourself depending on your relationships with your suppliers and your creditors in general um, but someone like HMRC, for example, they, they don't get as personal with, with your business. They just want things done as and when they want things done. So and that's if you could even have a you know, sensible, <laughs> sensible conversation with them in the first place. Well, if you can, please let me know how you've done it, because I'd be very interested in that. Um, you know, it, so so how, can you, how can you give them that comfort? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. you know, you can seek advice. You know, talking to somebody like us or a solicitor or, or anybody within the professional sphere that deals with this sort of stuff, is going to give that credit to comfort. Okay, they are taking this seriously. Mm. Let's let's listen to them now because you know we you know let's not go you know full hog into the situation and use the worst the worst we can do because we might not need to do that and there might be a real route out of this. So um, it's 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 opening a dialogue in the first instance. So you mm -hmm. can try and keep it in house mm -hmm. and, and deal. You know it's good for your relationship building. It's good for building trust with with the people that you deal with and your and your stakeholders. But ultimately, you know, it doesn't need to cost a lot of money just to get a professional opinion or a professional voice in an assignment just to make sure that that creditor is aware that this, it's being taken seriously and, and the right things are being done um, and value is being protected with their interests at heart. I so whether it's, you know, room. whether it's the bank, HMRC, um, suppliers, you've, you've got to, you know, deal with them, haven't you? Yeah. And they all, like you say, they all create their own, um, all create their own sort of pressures. Um, 
I think it's also worth noting that the, the credit of pressure bit brings with it, you know, obligations on the directors, which we're going to be talking about yes. um, separately in a different video. But it's about how you react to that, isn't it? Because if you don't react, you know, properly, then firstly you've got an issue around your obligations. And secondly, you've got an issue around, you know, can the business continue? Yeah. Because pressure could be a creditor issuing a one up petition, which you know, if you, if you don't address, it's, it's the end of the company, isn't it? So yeah, it's about what, what what you know what can we do to try and alleviate the pressure? It's amazing what a conversation can solve. You know, you don't always have to go down these hideous routes of legal action and and, and and huge costs in some cases you know it's, it's about talking whether it's yourself or through professional advisors yeah. to the people that are buying pressure to and you. what might those sort of solutions look like then so we know that we've got pressure but what you know what sorts of things can um, you know with advice what sorts of things can you be doing to I think the, the key is to find the solution mm -hmm. so if there's if there's a bigger problem with the business and it needs breathing space um, you know you can look at processes um, you, you, we, we talk about in in, in 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 other series videos that you know it's it's about identifying the problem and what's preventing uh, those payments being made but you know it could be it could be very short. You've got things like time to pay. You've mm -hmm. got um, with HMRC. HMRC, yeah, yeah. but you can have that with any creditor, to be honest. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily. It's just most common um, within within the HMRC world. But it's 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 working towards a solution, which ultimately looks like a creditor being paid in some way, shape, or form. There could be some debt forgiveness in mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're going to put forward a debt forgiveness proposal, you need to you need to be telling them that it's the best outcome and evidencing that it's the best outcome because people aren't going to accept less than what they're due unless they can be, understand fully why that is the right outcome for them. And that right sort of, for them. that professional input does bring with it a bit of sort of credibility, doesn't it? 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So we've got a business, um, we've got creditor pressure, uh, we know that the landscape's changing, um, like I said, for the worse, you know, if, if you owe money, but for the better if you're trying to recover it. Um, and it's about you know w what solutions can we come up with um, if if you're running a business and you are faced with creditor pressure. So very interesting, I think very topical at the moment with all the sort of legislative uh, changes. Um, so we hope you found that useful, and thank you for watching. <laughs>